Okay, so today we are going to do a power balance test. We're going to do a good power balance test. We're going to cancel some cylinders, and then we are going to uh, do a uh, power balance test with a failed cylinder and uh, kind of show you how to do it. So first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, boot this car uh, the, up on the IDS or the IDS up on the car and then uh, show you how to do that. So we are in a screen here where now it's going to tell us to, um, to start a session. And we're going to start a session with all other vehicles. And then we hit enter on here. And it's going to tell us to turn the key to on. We'll let it do its boot up process. This is a 2013 Ford Escape with a 1.6 liter engine. So now we are booted up on the car and we can come in here to our toolbox up on the top left corner and we're going to come down to powertrain choose powertrain we're going to do pick power balance and follow directions and it's going to tell us to start the engine and then press the tick All right, so what you're seeing here is a relative power balance. In other words, what we're watching is as the cylinders fire, they're gonna rotate the crankshaft a certain RPM. So if we have a cylinder that's, uh, if all cylinders are working good, each, as each cylinder fires, it's gonna turn the RPM or turn the crankshaft to a, a given RPM all evenly across the board. And you can see that this thing is running you know quite even across the board here all right and it's not uncommon depending on the type of engine it is like our, our v10s will be very unstable looking and uh and they're you know it'll be you know they'll be all over the board here but we're really good here so i'm going to what i'm going to do is going to show you some options that we have here we can uh choose let me kind of turn the camera a little bit to the right here we got the little dude over here we can pick that little guy right there and what that does is uh, tell us that our air conditioning on. Let me turn the air conditioning off. But what we're able to do here is when we, we choose this is we can cancel cylinders. So you can see there, we've turned off the fuel injector to number one, and then we can do the same to number three. We can't do consecutive cylinders. We won't let you stack them up, but we can and the reason we might want to use this is maybe we got an engine that's running rough or we're trying to, I don't know, we're just trying to figure out what's going on here with something. Um, or perhaps we have an engine that's got a cylinder knock or something like that and we're trying to uh, cancel a cylinder to see if, if, a, if, if it's a connecting rod or a wrist pin and we're trying to do something of that nature. So we have that ability to do that. Now we can, all the black marks that are on here are witness marks so that we can see that if we had a misfire, we could, um, you know, something, a spark plug misfire or something like that that would happen. You'd get a quick um, quick shot down and then uh, it might go back. It'll just give us, the, the black marks just give us a history of where it's been and it gets kind of clouded up so we can continue to, to erase those and kind of watch that engine how it's running, okay? So the other thing we could do with this is, um, let, me, let me just show you a, I'll simulate a engine misfire and you kind of see how it is. And all I did there was unplug a coil for cylinder number three. Now that's a pretty hard misfire. That cylinder's, if you if you want to see it, you can see over here on the scale that it's turning uh, 25 or 75 RPM less than the other cylinders, and that's an average. Um, but and I plug it back in, and it still continues to misfire. And the reason that it continues to misfire is that computer picks up a cylinder misfire and it doesn't want to ruin the catalytic converter so it'll turn the injector off for a little while and then now it's back on again and now it's running smooth again now we can judge how bad a misfire we're having based on how many rpm difference it is from the rest uh, a typical you know a, a 
spark plug misfire or ignition misfire is going to be minus 75, but you could have a, a injector that's misfiring or, or it's running a little bit lean, and the cylinder might be firing some, but not as good as the rest of the cylinders, and that's going to show up in like maybe minus 40 RPM or something like that. Um, so uh, that is your power balance. Okay, so what are we going to try to find with this power balance test? Uh, we want to verify a, how the engine's running. If it comes in with a misfire, if it comes in with a uh, customer complaint of uh, intermittent misfire or something like that, we can actually take this and drive down the road with it. Um, if it keeps it under a certain RPM, it'll pick it up. If it gets above a certain RPM, it will not pick it up. But we can drive down the road um, and, and find an engine misfire. Say we have spark plug that are, that are breaking down or uh, coils that are breaking down intermittently or something like that. We're going to try to use this tool to try to find those misfires or verify misfires. Or what we're trying to do ultimately is we're trying to, um, remember we talked about uh, system, symptom, system, cause, and correction. Okay. We want to find, we want to, if we have an engine misfire, we want to bring it down to which, which the system. Is it the ignition system or is it the uh, fuel system or is it a mechanical problem? So we can, this is just one of the tools in our toolbox so that we can kind of help try to figure out what's going on with this car. So um, uh, it's it's actually one of our first go-to tools. If it's if we've got a misfire complaint or something like that, it's going to be one of the first places we're going to go to try to... Um, find out what's going on with this thing so that uh, it's quick, it's easy, and very unobtrusive to the car. We don't, we're not, we're not taking anything apart. We're just plugging into the DLC and, and finding out what's going on with it. Okay.